Welcome to Luminar 3 with Libraries. Finally, we have a version of Luminar where digital asset management is included. And they, from what I've seen from this beta version that I'm using at the moment, it's released on December the 18th, 2018. From this beta version, it looks like they have done a great job. The key thing they've been aiming for here, as far as I'm aware, is keeping things simple and keeping things quick. Having software that works speedily and efficiently for you. And that is, you know, you see that all over this when you use it. So I want to take a look at just the library section today, really. I'm not going to really start going into editing images and stuff. I want to just show you the libraries bit because I think that's the big selling point here. And that's what people are going to come to this thinking. Yeah, you know, this, this really makes this a, a likely alternative for Lightroom. I did a video on that last year, actually, looking at, is this something I could replace Lightroom with? The inclusion of the asset management certainly makes me think that, yes, it is could easily because I can stay within this software now. Finally, it's great. Okay, so down the right-hand side here, we have um, the tab at the, at the top, the library tab, that is obviously new. And we have a number of different um, sections down here, shortcuts, albums, and folders. So right now there is nothing in Luminar. We still have the ability to just add an image if we want. If we just go to here and say open images for quick edit, that will open them up in the quick edit section and they'll stay there. So it's almost like a sub library within your library, if you know what I mean. So you can still open those individual images if you just got a quick sort of image on a desktop from someone that you want to have a quick play with or edit. You can still open those individual images without messing with your own library. But to add something in, you just add a folder. And I'm gonna add, just to show you the speed of this, I'm gonna add a folder that contains 4,000, over 4,000 raw images now, just to give you a feel of kind of how quickly these are added. Uh, because these are from uh, Lightroom, they're already actually sorted into dates as far as the folder structure is concerned. But Luminar doesn't care about that. It's If you put, just dumped a load of files in one massive folder, it will immediately sort them into those folders and into the dates, you know, and I'll show you that in a second. You'll see what I mean. So there we go. We got our image library. It's now being added, and these are just some really old, old pictures. Okay. And if you look now, we have 4,024 photos. If I just zoom in on the top right-hand side of the screen now, we've got all our photos in here, and we can go to them either from the fo folders section, so we can look and go and say, I wanna look at um, the folder from this, you know, something in this particular folder. And as I say, these are sorted in date folders, but your images might not be, they might be projects or something like that. So you can go into your kind of explorer style folders area to look for your pictures, but the moment you put them in to Luminar, they also get sorted in date, and we've got some from 2000 here because I had my camera, uh, the battery run out of my camera and it defaulted back to this date. So if I go into 2018, for example, I've now got all my photos from October. It's sorted them all there. So I just click on October and logically I now get all the thumbnails from October. This is fairly straightforward stuff. I mean, there's limited ways you can do digital asset management of uh, in a photo system of this type, you know. But the key here is that it works quickly and there's some nice little sort of just touches that mean that it's just simple to use. And when software is simple to use, it means one, you will use it, and two, you will get your work done quicker. And for a lot of people, time is money. So this sort of thing matters. Right now, you can see that I've got my images, my thumbnail set to largest. So you can change this to small if you want. If you want to have a, be able to see tons of your images at once, you can do that. I find that the largest one is a little bit big. Sorry, I had it set to large, didn't I? Um, no, I had it set to largest. I find that's a little bit too big. I personally like that size. For me, I can scroll through that and I can see my images really quickly. They've left no major padding around the thumbnails. The idea here is that you can see your pictures which is important. And uh, if I want to turn off this at the right-hand side to make even more space, I can just turn that off by clicking the, clicking the uh, tab there. And now I have even more space to look at my images. Within each of these thumbnails, and they're created and indexed as soon as you add a folder, but I must point out right now that Luminar is not creating a ton of other 
files and folders containing these images. It's essentially working where those images exist. And that's it's, it's able to do that because it can work so quickly and create the thumbnails and generate new thumbnails and stuff. So it doesn't need to create endless folders containing catalog files, a gigabyte after gigabyte of catalog files. Uh, the catalog remains small and it means that folders can be re-indexed and kept up to date really easily. And I'll, I'll do, put, tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. So if I want to, oh, I can sort of star an image here. I can say this is one that I really want, I really like. So I'm going to five star it and I'm going to add it to my favorites as well. Double click on that, go into my images go into the image and then it sort of uh, you see it saw it process the kind of raw image and you can see that this is taken with totally the wrong white balance just had the camera set wrong and go into my open up my edit section now and just add a couple of filters onto here so i'll just add my raw develop onto here i did say i wasn't going to edit but i'll just quickly adjust this one so let's just change the white balance to something more reasonable push up the exposure and there we go we have now a nice simple before and after on this image so to step back to the uh, the thumbnails, I just use this up arrow here, or I can go into this down drop down and go step to various different places. So I can go back to all of 2018, or I can go back to October. But in this case, I'm just going to use the up arrow, and now I'm back with my uh, image here. Now remember, I pointed out that this is a beta version of the software. I think I said that at the start of this. This is a beta version of the software, so there are still some little bit bugs and stuff to iron out. One of which I think is the fact that this is not showing the correct, the the graded version of the image correctly. In fact, it's not really showing the original version of the image correctly right now. I think that's just a, a small bug, and hopefully, you know, that, that all these issues will be fixed. So I'm not going to judge the software in any way on those type of things because. This is beta. It is still in test and will be for another 12 days before it's released. So if I go back to my library now, I can go to, you know, jump to a different section entirely here. Uh, it's just, I just love the speed of it. I mean, I wish they'd made this, this, this could be a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, this scroll, scroll bar here. It's a, bit, a little bit um, smaller. Go into here passes the image great and on the left hand side you've got a film strip but I'm going to go back into my library and just show you the other areas of the shortcut so this is what you're familiar with this is useful and it's very quick however we now also have favorites section we've got a trash there as well if any any that you uh, put in the uh, the trash favorites uh, you've got rejected photos so typically you would go through photos and say no that's rubbish blurred whatever reject them and they all end up in there recently added recently edited and then the recently edited expands out to be today, yesterday, this week, and this month. So you can easily get back to those photos that you have just worked on. And in my case, I'm starting afresh here, so I've only got this one. Go back into there, reapplies the adjustments, and there we go. We've got the image back exactly as it was. And if I want to export that, I can right click, export, I'll do that. Or I can actually create an album, which is also in libraries here under albums. Uh, and and then quick edits. So this is where I add an image in through the section I showed you at the start where you're just adding one particular image. They all end up in here and stay in there. They aren't part of your folders and they aren't part of your main um, main sort of date dated photographs. Adding another folder is, you know, it's just as easy. So if you do suddenly come across some more images you need to work on, a big, big group of images, you sent something by a client or something like that, I'm just going to add these. No, they're not in there. Where are they? Uh, I'm just going to add these ones that um, those those lighting tests we did a while ago instead. So these are from a from a Nikon camera, and they're uh, these are all raw as well. They need a lot of adjustments doing to them, but the actual images are great. And there we go. Now they exist in my folders under a separate section, so I can go into here, just look at my folders from I don't know twenty my sh uh, photos from 2018, <laughs> drunken New Year, or I can just go into my this folder. But if I go back to my catalog here it's now added these in the right section based on when they were taken obviously which uh, i'm guessing is march or april time sometime i'm not too sure march 2018 it says at the top doesn't it 
So I mentioned just before about keeping in sync, and this is another big feature with this software and with the way they've done the catalog. Because this isn't creating all those additional images and all those additional files, this will stay in sync. So if I go into the actual area where this exists now, and let's choose a date, let's say the 5th of October, that, those keyboards, 5th of October, and I'm gonna just change the name entirely on this to something else. So I'm actually change the name of a file, expecting possibly a dead link within the catalog. Well, it just updates straight away. So if I now go back into my photos section and the, what was it, 5th of October, was it? I now have this photo here, double click on it, and you can see down the bottom left hand side, it's now called something else and it's carried across the develop settings that I put in earlier. You've got all the usual stuff within Luminar, the looks down the bottom, uh, the look strip down the bottom, which again, you can close if you want to uh, hide the looks panel to give yourself a little bit more space. Um, it's really nice, nice addition to the software. And here's the kind of main point, I suppose, for a lot of people. This is not subscription software. This is, a, well, it's currently on promotion. You can pick this up for probably about sort of 50 pound or so. And yeah, probably about 60, maybe 60 pound. And if you want an ad additional discount, you can use our, our discount code, which will give you an additional percentage off. Uh, so probably drop it by, is it 20% or something? Uh, and that's uh, TD Cat Tech. So use that discount code on it. And um, there's no subscriptions. There's no monthly amount to pay updates will be, I think, given for free during 2019. I think they've made a promise on that during 2019. And then any major version changes after that come uh, with a, a major, major discount for people who already own the software. So I'm trying, you know, I guess I'm trying to sell this to you, not because I want to make any money, not because I'm looking to make any huge amount of commission, because there's just not that many people are going to do it through my links. I'm, I'm doing it because this is really nice software now that they've added this section, um, added the digital asset management. This is a real contender for something to use every day to process your photos. It is super quick, really responsive, and just so easy to use as far as the library is concerned. It's not cluttered up. There's still some features they need to add and they've got a clear roadmap for 2019 where they're gonna add much, much more to the library side of things. But so far, it's looking really good. This is Luminar 3 with libraries. First look, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you soon. Bye for now.